Hey everyone, just thought I'd share with you another web development tool. This one allows you to build both native iPhone, iPad and Android applications. But I'm going to show you the web applications feature and um, what I think is just as just as valuable as an iPhone application but 100% free and no need for signing up um, with Apple or anyone like that. And the best thing is it works on all your devices. Now I've made um, a few web apps and literally they they are really really easy to make hit ibuildapp.com and once you've signed up um, you can create an app now you get the choice here to do a native app which means it has to be submitted to the iPhone store and so on or you can do a web app now a web app works pretty much like a native app but it's web based which is good means that the access is a little bit easier. Now they give you a heap of different um, designs you can use. Now I'm going to use the ebook design. I'm not going to build an ebook but I just like the layout. Now you can choose whatever you like. I'll build a few with a different one but let's let's choose ebook and give it app a name. I'm going to call it um, Z. Now I'm going to build an app for my VCAPE class that has content from the web like podcasts, uh, RSS feeds and so on. Now what you would do here is in the background you would like to put in any sort of background image. Now you can easily pick your graphic, hit choose file and locate the graphic that you would like to use, have something in mind. Um, that looks pretty good. It will give you the option to crop the image. Oh, that one's actually... Oh, no, that, that'll work. Select it there, hit apply. Now you may have a specific image that you have in mind, your class, for example. Uh, and there you go, you get a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like over here. Now, on the bottom of your page, you'll see the tabs that the have come as default in your application. Now I'm going to go ahead and change these. I want to produce um, down the bottom an, a, an icon that says podcast. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the edit tab and it's going to give me the option to change this to podcast which will link to the class podcast. And I want to find an icon that um, sort of gets that across. Now I reckon maybe the play button could be appropriate. I hit save, you can now see that I've got podcasts and I've got a play and I don't really want it in capital so I'll change that to podcast and hit save and if I head across and change this or the rest of these to the other content that I would like inside of my app um, that would be good. So I would like to link this tab or make this tab my videos section. So I'm going to change this to videos. Now this will link to a YouTube account so people can watch class related videos that I um, make or screencasts that students make or so on. So let's find oh, the camera. That looks good. And let's hit save. Now just remember that this could be linking to anything in a variety of places. So over here um, I'm going to link it to the Facebook page for that particular um, class. Now we've got a, a class Facebook page and it could be a school Facebook page whatever. Oh, didn't pick an icon. Let's go back and let's pick something that looks a little bit more Facebook-esque and there is, for memory, a very Facebook looking icon in here. That one there, let's say. Looks a little bit like Facebook and yep and the last one I would like to be a link to my delicious feed which um, has the resources that I tag for that class so that could be hmm, what's a good icon for that let's just say oh, let's say the computer and we hit save now what we've got here you can see is our, are our tabs and they're interactable. This is a, a simulator version. If I click on pod, podcast, 
it's not going to actually show me the podcast because it's going to load the screen where I can actually change the content for this page. Now, if you remember, we picked the ebook version. It's set up as a page for an ebook. Now, that's not going to be really useful to me, so I need to change the page type and I need to change it to an RSS feed because that's where uh, or how my podcast will be accessed. So if I hit continue, it will change that page for me and I can put in my RSS feed. Now I've got my RSS feeds sitting here waiting to go, so I'll copy that. Now yours will be whatever you or wherever you store your podcasts or whatever it might be. And if I hit save, we will see this go into the simulator. May not demo it. Uh, looks like it will. There you go. One episode from the podcast is now inside of the, the web app. If I want to go to the second tab now and hit videos, I will get the choice to change page type again because it's set to HTML at the moment, which might be good for some circumstances. And I want to link it to an RSS feed again. Now, you've got all these other choices as well. You don't just have to use RSS, um, but I find it's, it's really easy. I think there is almost um, an e a way that you could do it, a video stream, if you had direct videos and you wanted to play it within your app. But RSS is easy because the content will update um, as you update that feed. If I hit continue, um, back to my list of RSS feeds, this is my personal account here. And if I paste that in, hit save, you should now see that content being added to the web app. And I'll do the same for Facebook. So there's the videos for the class. Uh, they're screencasts that kids can watch in their own time. If I hit Facebook, I get the choice to change page type again. And <laughs> I think there is an option, give access to your Facebook wall. I'll try that one. I can't remember if I used this in the actual app that I made for this before. Yep, I did. So I'm going to go to um, my Facebook page. Now I can actually use the RSS feed if I like, or the actual page. I might change it to an RSS feed just for the purpose of this demo. But you could go and find the actual HTML link to your Facebook page if you wanted to add that. Let's paste it in. Hit save. Hopefully that comes up. So this will actually be a portal for kids to look through and see what's been happening, what maybe um, work has been um, required of them and so on. And you can see there's the pod, all the things I post on the Facebook page. And finally, we want to add access to the web, the web um, resources, the things that I tag in my delicious account. So again, you've guessed it, change page type, go RSS. And continue, and I've got my RSS there ready to go. If I paste that in, hit save, we'll see that appear. And then basically our app is finished. The content will um, update as we update those RSS feeds. So as I bookmark more content, it'll automatically appear in there. As I produce more podcasts, they'll appear. And as I post in Facebook and on YouTube, um, that will also appear. So if I go back to the home page, um, you can see it's looking pretty, it's pretty good. It really is. It's quite good. It looks like an, a native iPhone app, yet it's, it runs in um, a HTML scenario. If I wanted to add different types of content, then it's just a matter of changing the page type. And there's heaps of things that you can do. You can, if I go back here, and if I edit that particular icon to suit what I need. I can change the page type to the following. Uh, I can add and type in my own HTML content if I, if I know that. Audio streams, Google Maps to show you where the school is perhaps if it was a school app. You can link a Google Calendar so that people in your class can actually stay in time with the assessments. Imagine that, they could go into their app to see when things are due in your class. You can add in photo galleries um, for activities and things that you do in class. Contacts, uh, contact, sorry, video lists. Um, that's just another way to display videos. 
you can put an ebook in there. You can have your own contact via tap to email so that when they click it, they get um, an email um, sent to them. We might actually add that instead of video. So you can see the other options. You can link to a URL, Twitter conversations, you can do an events page. You can actually prompt them to take a picture and have it sent and stored within a place or um, actually gather data. So this is all within that web app um, scenario. So let's do the tap to email. Let me continue here. This will mean that when they go there, they can easily send a response to me and my email address. Let's hit save. And I don't think it actually previews this. And there we go. Our app is built, but we probably should change that icon to say email. And let's see if there's not a better looking icon for that. I'm sure there's something other than this, but we'll just go with that for now. And we're pretty happy. Let's hit continue. And it takes us into, or it asks us if we, we think we're happy and we can continue as is. And then here we are. We actually get to upload a splash screen to your app if you like. This is what loads as soon as they open their app. You can pick your time format. Not really important. Hit continue. We head through here. We get to give the app a name, a description. This is an app. VCE, PE, learning, physical education. You can put in your app website there. Um, and you need to upload a 512 by 512 version of your app icon um, just to help with the tracking and making it a little, bit, a little bit more professional. I've got a 512 icon ready to go. And if I hit when it loads, I hit continue, we are pretty much done. Hit continue and here we are. We get the choice here to enter that URL on your phone to access the web app. On, and I mean on any device that has mobile access, not even an iPhone or an Android, anything or you can use the QR code scanner. Now I'm going to give you a demo of what our app actually turned out like um, and then you'll be able to see uh, how easy it is to do this in your class. So I'll scan the app and we'll have a bit of a tour on my phone. So here we are back again. My phone is uh, up on the screen. If I get a QR code app, which are free on the store, and I press scan and I hover it, over the QR code, which you can see, I'm doing it at the moment when it scans in. There we are, it's picked it up. Ask me if I want to open the web app. I hit yes, and it's loading it. And here is our app. You can see the, the title at the top, and here's our graphics, and there are our little icons that we picked before. Now, if I go podcast, it's going to load that particular podcast, and I can play it from inside the app really conveniently. I can go look at my videos. There they all are. I can look at the Facebook wall. Or I can send an email response to the teacher. So there you are. It is a web app. It's really simple, really effective. And if you actually wanted to convert this into an app icon on your screen, press the button down the bottom and go add to home screen. Here we are, it's called Phys Ed. Press add and we've just added our own little app icon um, that enables a web app for you. And you can do this for whatever you like. And it is basically, uh, it's 100% free. Once you get to this stage and you've tested it and you like it, you can hit publish your app and that will just basically confirm, um, see your app was successfully published in our app store and that's just a little app store that they have on their website. So there it is, test it out, it, it is perfect and it means that lots of people will have apps for their classes now. Um, thank you.